Good morning, everyone. I pray that your Monday was filled with spaces and places where you had joy, where you had peace, where you were able to laugh. Maybe when you made yourself an avatar that really did not look much like you, but you had fun doing it. However you are able to find places where your anxiety is not high, when you're not in the depths of depression, no matter how small or how big it is, always makes it a good day. We have begun our topic of fear. And I wanna kinda of talk about fear in terms of let's looking at different types of fear. Now there's something called healthy fears. And I'll give you an example. There's things that we should be afraid of given our circumstances. And I want you to remember the given our circumstances. Now, if I were to find myself in um, a forest and a bear, and I saw a bear, I should be afraid. I should be afraid because I have no idea what to do if I see a bear. I have never had any experience with the bear. I know that bears will attack. And so I should be afraid. If I were on a boat and I fell off without a float around me, I should be afraid because I really do not swim that well. Well, let's say I can only swim as long as I could hold my breath. I have never mastered swimming with my head in and out of the water. Still on my list of things to do, but I have not mastered it yet. So that's a healthy fear. But what I want you to pay attention to, at least with the example of swimming, that does not stop me from getting in the water. It does not stop me because I like the water. What I do is I make sure I have a vest on that will hold me up, some sort of float, and then I can play in the water and pretend like I'm really swimming or treading water, just like the for real swimmers. So what I want us to focus on today is not just fear in itself, but the fears that we have that impede our ability to enjoy life. I'm gonna say that again, the fears that we have that impede our ability to enjoy the things we want to in life. So for people who have been traumatized, there's a phrase that we talk a lot about called hypervigilance. And again, to use as an example, there are things we should be vigilant about, things we should be paying attention to. Um, in 2020, at least where I live, which is right outside, of, right outside of a major urban area, it is vigilant. It makes good sense to make sure that I lock my doors, that I lock my windows, that I have a home security system. Now, maybe if I lived out in the country or someplace else, it may not make as much sense. But in my context, it makes sense for me to be vigilant. Hypervigilance on the other end would say that even with my home alarm system, I have more than two locks on my door and that I wake up in the night and I check the locks and I check the doors periodically um, because I still cannot allow myself to feel safe. That's hypervigilance. Or another word we may use in, in a more familiar way is that's being extra. Um, vigilance may say when I go to a shopping center or to the mall that I'm going to park my car in between the lines that are drawn so I can make sure that um, when other people beside me, when they open their doors, their car doors don't hit my car and vice versa, I don't hit their cars. That's vigilant. I want to pull straight into the parking space to make sure I have room. Hypervigilance says, I want to make sure no one comes anywhere near my car, so I'm going to park in the opposite direction. I'm going to take up two or three parking spaces. As a matter of fact, because I'm hypervigilant, I'm probably not going to go to the mall because if I went inside, there would be too many people, and I don't know what they're doing, and if something jumps off, I may not be able to get out in time. And so you see where I'm going? There is vigilance, and there's hypervigilance. Hypervigilance, again, how does that impede our way of life? With the example I used about not being able to sleep because you're afraid that someone's going to break into your home, so you're checking your locks and doors periodically throughout the night, that prevents you from getting a good night's sleep. That prevents you 
your body from going through the repairing process that it goes through when you're asleep. It prevents you from being a pleasant person the next morning because you have now had a lack of sleep. So you see those things kind of snowball one into the other. Now, do we come out the womb being hypervigilant? No, that's another thing that is a learned behavior. It's something that we may have gotten because we grew up with parents who were hypervigilant, who, who, whose, whose anxiety um, was so high that we were taught to be afraid of everything. We may have found ourselves in traumatic situations, particularly combat or whatever, that has kept us on edge that has kept us constantly looking over our shoulder to see when the next thing is gonna happen, when the next time am I gonna be threatened. And so it, it, it impedes our, our daily living because it kind of makes our world smaller and smaller and smaller. There's places we won't go because we're afraid something may happen. There are um, invitations that we will not take advantage of because again, we're afraid something may happen. There are, um, it, 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 it impedes our ability to be social beings. And we were, we are, as, as humans, we have been, our DNA says that we are social, that, 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 that we thrive when we have interactions with other people. But if our anxiety is so high, if our fear is so high, it impedes that. And I, and I want to take the time to kind of look at when I say fear and anxiety, I'm not saying them as synonyms. But what I am saying them as, when you have increased anxiety, it means that your, uh, your fear of something has grown exponen exponentially, okay? Increased anxiety, if you ever look at it, underlying that increased anxiety is a fear, okay? And you may say, well, I'm just afraid of spiders. Well, I would ask you, what is it about f spiders that make you afraid? Now, to me, they are not the most pleasant looking of creatures, um, but, and that may be why I choose not to have them around me. But if the, the bigger the spider, then my anxiety raises because of my fear that it might bite me, that it may do harm to me. I really have no idea what black widow spiders do, but just the name raised my anxiety raise. You may say, well, I'm afraid of driving over a bridge. I would ask you to, to ask yourself why. What is it about that? Are you afraid that the structure will not stay in place? Are you afraid of being so high up? So just suppose something happens that you may be in danger. What, what, what constitutes that fear? What is, what is, what is, what is fueling your raised anxiety. Some people are afraid of being in closed spaces. It's called claustrophobia. And again, we look at what is fueling that fear. So yesterday I asked you to consider what, how has fear impacted your life? How has it prevented you from, from doing some things or being able to experience some things that possibly deep down inside you really want to experience, but you know what? I'm not going to do it. Um, today, I would ask you to continue thinking along those lines, but also to think about the things that you may be afraid of and to identify why. What is fueling that fear? What about that? Now, to take it to an even deeper level, during this time of COVID-19, where we are self-isolating, some of us, our anxiety is high because our fear is that we may get the virus. We've heard, I've heard all these horror stories about people being on ventilators and all those things that happen. We all, well, at least I know, I now um, have people in my life who are dear to me, who are no longer here because of the virus. And so that fuels my fear. It increases my anxiety. Um, there may be fears around shortages of food. There may be fears around a number of things. So what I ask you today is right now, because some of you may have gotten triggered by something I said, let's take a deep breath. Let's do it again.
And one more time. And as you're able, because I don't want you to obsess about it, but to give yourself permission to just consider what are you afraid of and why? What fuels that fear? We are going to get through this together. We are going to, and when I say get through this together, I mean we are going to help each other to achieve a place of balance or at least move towards balance so that our emotions are not so extreme in one direction or so extreme in another direction, <clears throat> but that we can learn how to, how to manage the different, situ the different emotions that come based on the situations that we find ourselves faced with. And we're going to do it on purpose. I love each and every one of you and I look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Stay safe and stay blessed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.